Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And it's crazy to think it's already May, but here we are. Uh, this is my May bullet journal setup. We're just gonna get right into it. The theme this month is my dog Zora and her favorite little toys, Oliver and Penny. I'm thinking I'm gonna give a little nod to Animal Crossing as far as the vibe because I got suckered in and it's like my life right now. So I get cozy and let's get to it. So for the title spread, I'm of course doing a quote page, a little play on home is where the heart is. And instead I'm going with home is where Zora is. I'm using a mix of fonts. I got a chunky block letter or sans serif for the word home, a slab serif for the word Zora, and then just a good old hand letter script for the rest. As far as the color scheme, I'm pretty much sticking with the colors of Zora's toys so everything looks a bit more cohesive. Luckily those colors work well together and look springy and bright. I'm going in with two different blues just to give a bit more interest and dimension. One's a more seafoam blue and the darker one is closer to a sky blue. I'm using the darker blue along the bottom of the letters to really give a subtle ombre effect and blend in that using the Tombow dual brush blender. I'll try to link or mention all of my supplies down in the description for you if you're curious about anything. I'm also using my Cricut fine liners. I think I was inspired by my own stationary tour video and decided to use a few underutilized supplies with this theme. But anyways, I'm just using those to partially outline Home and Zora for even more interest. Okay, for the title page, I'm drawing a little doggy bones and her favorite treats. They're like peanut butter and bacon snacks and they're in the shape of a bee. So I thought it would be a cute little motif for the background and like throughout the month. So Zora just turned seven in April and she's just the funniest little like anti-dog ever. She doesn't fetch, she doesn't really do the dog park or other dogs for the most part. Uh, she's, she's pretty bougie, I like to think. And she has the most entertaining mannerisms. Uh, when I got her, she was supposed to be a teacup miniature chihuahua, but alas, she is neither miniature, I know she's at least 15 pounds, nor completely a chihuahua, but she's awesome, so there's that. Animals have never been my favorite thing to draw and there was probably unnecessary anxiety happening while coloring in Zora, but I think it turned out cute. I used the Tombow dual brush markers for her, a light brown, a darker brown, and a more orange tone since she does have sort of that foxy quality. Over the years, she's gotten lighter and lighter in the face, so I thought dotting a white Posca paint pen would sort of give her that characteristic. I got a new paint pen and didn't experience any unwanted flooding, so score. And then of course I'm going to finish it off with some marbly, semi-transparent washi tape. Moving on to my monthly spread, I'm drawing Zora sleeping in between the blinds in our office. This is my usual view of her from my desk and I think it's super cute and so funny that despite the few comfortable sleep stations we've set up for her around the house, she's often weaved between these blinds on the hard floor like knocked out. She also has a habit of hiding little pieces of food in the house in corners and shoes and cushions, you name it. 
So I had to make what would otherwise be a polka dot pattern into a doggy food trail pattern. I made a little mistake here with the blinds. I colored in the sky where it's supposed to be a blind and so I just took a piece of dotted grid paper from the back of my bullet journal and used it to cover it up and it came out perfectly. You can't even tell that I made a mistake there. And it was so funny because I was trying so hard to, I was worried about messing up the blinds. And so, so funny that I, ended, I was concentrating so hard on not messing up that I messed up, but it ended up just fine. So I'm drawing in Oliver over here with Penny and they're just hanging out, being ignored by a sleeping Zora. I'm blocking out the days with a yellow art line sticks marker and I love how bright this color is on the page. Then lettering the days of the week with my Tombow Photonesque hard tip marker. Love this for smaller lettering sections because I just get a little bit more control and it's not too terribly thick even when I press down super hard on it. I realized I hadn't done separate boxes for the calendar yet this year, so I wanted to separate out every calendar day in its own little box. I'm not too worried about being exact with these boxes. I'm going for a very rough, very fun look and making sure I'm rounding the corners. I thought it would be fun to give different color drop shadows to each of the boxes in no particular pattern. Just plop down colors right outside of the boxes and really make the whole spread come to life. Then I'm of course topping it off with some washi tape and some little dog food crumbs for cohesion and then moving right along. Next up is my habits and mood tracker. I haven't changed too much up with this. I made my calendar stickers again this month for the habit trackers. It just saves so much time and ends up blending right on in with the rest of the page. So funny story for this header. Zora has a pretty large like auto refill water bowl and she, after she takes a nice sizable drink, the water bubbles as it refills. Well, for some reason, this scares her literally every time and she actually runs away from her water bowl. So I'm drawing that, um, I'm just drawing the back of her and she's running off from the bubbling bowl For my mood tracker, I'm just outlining 31 pieces of dog food and treats and edible dog things. They scatter over to my box a day spread over to the right, so there's no header there, but if you're curious, I use my box a day spread to write down anything significant that happens that day, anything I'm feeling. Sometimes I do a mini doodle that symbolizes something that happened. It's, it's just a neat spread to come back to and helps me remember when things happen because uh, honestly, uh, it's really nice right now to have that when all the days are starting to melt into each other. I did wanna use a ruler for this just because I want things inside of the boxes to stick out and not so much the grid for where these doodles and thoughts are gonna live. I tied it to the monthly calendar by numbering the boxes with different color circles in no particular pattern and gave the entire grid a nice red drop shadow. So my last spread is my weekly spread and it's actually a supersized weekly spread. Since the month starts on a Friday and I'm pretty anal about starting a new theme on the actual first of the month, there are 10 days in this weekly spread. I've pared down my weekly spreads quite a bit since being in quarantine and they've honestly been changing as far as layout from week to week. 
But for this one, I just did a regular blocked out weekly utilizing a Dutch door for extra space and a whole page for random notes. I again, I'm just going in with these boxes haphazardly to give them that bit of wonky character. I'm using that same technique of randomly choosing colors and the themes palette for the drop shadows as well. But yeah, since we've been in more client meetings recently, I know I've been wanting more space in the weekly spread itself for notes. So I thought this spread layout was a great solution for that. Just having a whole page for notes. And I was still able to put my wash day product tracker in here as well on the back of the Dutch door. So yeah, I'm drawing Zora along the top, sleeping in an odd position, of course, and then she gets called. I love how the sleeping Z's turns into her name in the speech bubble over on the side. I'm using the same method every time when coloring her in, layering the light and then the dark and then sprinkling in the orange tone before dotting in the white on top. I was terrified every time I went to color her for some reason. I just thought it wasn't going to turn out, but it ended up being really cute every time. I'm also rounding the, the corners to that cut page. Okay, so once you flip the Dutch door, you can see that she's actually getting called for a bath. It's not her favorite thing, but I think with age, um, she's just getting more and more like over it. Uh, but yeah, I'm drawing in some bubbles and down at the bottom is Zora kind of engulfed in her purple doggy towel, all wet and defeated. For the full notes page, I'm just doodling Oliver holding a pencil like he just wrote the word notes at the top. I'm going to give this a border with a drop shadow and add some doggy crumbs and bones and I think that's a done deal. So before the final flip through, I want to thank everyone for watching. This has been a super fun way for me to document my progress and process with bullet journaling. Um, it's been really neat to share with friends, old friends, complete strangers. So I just want to say thanks. Definitely consider giving this video a like so others can find it easier and leave me a comment below. Let me know what your pet's weird habits are. I know they all have them. And with that said, let's get back to the final flip through. Bye guys. And if you like this video, here are a couple more I think you would enjoy.